Welcome back. In this video I'll be going over how to put your own textures over the default textures and then align them to UVs. So for a quick example I'll just say this smiley face is my texture and then the UV on the left is my box on the right unwrapped. We'll also just say that the second to bottom face is uh, the front face of my cube. If I position the smiley face onto that face then it'll get projected as a 2D asset onto a 3D object. It's that simple. Alright, so for this section, uh, as an example, I'll show you how to change the hue of uh, the face texture. If you want to make Gordon blue or purple for some odd reason. Um, this is a pretty useful layer, adjustment layer, um, since Half-Life models have a pretty limited color palette. Once you have your texture how you like it, you can go to File, Save As, and then go to your Work folder. Then you can add a custom name if you'd like. In this case, I saved a PSD document just so I can have all my layers. Uh, I made a separate file where I, you know, merged all my layers together. And then I will choose an indexed palette. And you can play with this to uh, make it how you want it to look. In the end, I went with no dither, because I thought it uh, would fit the art style the best. And then you can go ahead and export as a BMP with an 8-bit depth. Jumping around here a little bit, um, I'm going to go to my Blender document. You can see where each UV maps onto the texture. So for this pant leg, uh, these vertices will line up with this section of the texture. And I'll be replacing this pant leg with that texture. So I'll start by removing the background, finding the section I want, and then I'll make a copy of it. And you'll want to figure out how big to make it and then resize it accordingly. I'll use the eraser tool to clean up this uh, little white edge of the pant leg. So basically these little black areas, um, if you don't have your texture right over them, It'll kind of bleed through, and that'll look bad. Same thing goes with the texture itself, like if you have little bits of color left over, it's not going to look too great. And I'm speeding up here, just going through, you know, clipping, pasting, resizing, all that. A 
A lot of the time I'll use these uh, selection boxes to see how big I should make it ahead of time. And then I resize it, or sometimes I'll just paste it straight on there and resize. In this part, I'm moving on to the back of the pants. Doing the same thing where I save a separate document of all my separate layers, and then I make a final copy where all the layers are merged together. Now I'll go ahead and copy, I'm sorry, cut and replace the base BMP in the uh, custom folder. And you can do the same thing with the face BMP. And it looks like I missed a lot of uh, sections of the texture, so this is a good reason to keep all your files separate and uh, you know, keep all your layers organized so that you can go back and change things and uh, not have things get overwritten. So to fix the gaps in the unchanged texture, what I'll do is I'll select the vertices and then I'll find the UV in the UV map. Then just rinse and repeat, do the same thing where you stretch the textures over uh, the old texture. While I was at it, I also decided to change the dither mode to diffusion, because it kind of looked uh, weird with the limited color palette of no dither. And I re-exported the texture, reloaded the Blender file, and there you go. Obviously it's not perfect, a lot of these seams have uh, little bits of the texture poking out, but uh, if you spent more time on it, you could fix all the seams. The seams look like this because the UVs jump from one part of the texture to another, and uh, you could use something like the Clone Stamp in Photoshop on low hardness to fix it. But in this case, I'm just going to leave most of it as is.
resizing will also mess with the UVs. Here's another spot where I uh, messed up. Uh, this elbow connects to part of the pants texture, but again, I'm just gonna leave it as is. In addition to blending them together with something like the clone stamp, you can also resize the uh, UVs just so that they don't go over the edges. Also just for fun, I'm going to do Alt S, which is a proportional scale on uh, Gordon's arms, and then you can move the armature around so that it matches the mesh. When you're finished with your model, you can go to the Scene tab and then click the Source Engine Export dropdown. You'll want to have it on SMD. And then your target engine will be Gold Source, which is off screen right now. For the export path, you can choose your work folder. And then you can go to File, Export, Source Engine, and then Scene Export. Back in your work folder, you'll see the file that exported, which is dm underscore gordon underscore head. In the new window, I'll make two copies of the same file, and then I'll rename one of them to match the uh, deathmatch model. And then I'll replace it, and it's basically just overwriting both files so that it's the same in both game modes. In Jed's model viewer, go to Tools, Compile, and then find the QC file that's in your directory. After that, I'll copy the MDL that was just exported, go to my game folder, then find the MDL that I want to replace, and paste it. Also rename the MDL that was exported to player, and then I'll move it into the models folder. You should be all set to launch the game. In the options menu, the thumbnail file will be the same since we didn't change it. In the console, I'll change SV underscore cheats to one, and then third person, and there you go. You've got a garden with a blue head, and Carhartt pants, and small arms. Some more console commands that might be helpful are cam ideal yaw. In this case, I'll set it to 180 so that it'll face him. 
And there's plenty of other commands that you can use. All right, so that about wraps everything up. You should have a brand new model that you can go and run around with to your heart's content. Uh, if you learned something new, go ahead and leave a like if you want and uh, share with a friend. Thanks for watching.